Well, now joining us on Book TV as part of our preview of some of the books coming out in 2014 is a familiar face and name to Book TV viewers, Hampton Sides. Mr. Sides, you write about a lot of different topics. How do you pick your topics? Yeah, I think I kind of have a case of historical ADD. You know, I jump around different time periods. Uh, it's all American history, uh, but it's, uh, you know, I'm done with the World War II. I move on to uh, Manifest Destiny in the American West or the assassination of Martin Luther King. This particular news uh, story that's coming out is about um, an early American uh, exploration into the Arctic uh, that is pretty obscure now. It's not, it was extremely well known in its time in the 1880s, but it's not well known now. Um, I, I, you know, how I pick these topics is that mainly I'm looking for great characters and a great story arc. And uh, this one kind of, uh, had all the elements, and I knew as soon as I ran into the story of the USS Jeanette, that this was a good fit for me. And um, spent three and a half years uh, doing the research for the book, going to the Russian Arctic, uh, following the footpath uh, in the footsteps of, of the commander uh, George DeLong, and uh, uh, had a ball doing this book. First of all, how did you find this story? What year are we talking about, by the way? Uh, the expedition took place uh, in 1879. Um, they went through the Bering Strait and got locked in the ice and drifted for two years before the ship was finally uh, crushed by the ice and sank. So it's a, uh, at this point becomes a, a story of survival of trying to get to the nearest landmass, which was Siberia. And they made landfall in, the, in 1881 and uh, finally made it home in 1882. So it's that time period. How did you find this story? Um, I, I actually found the story by virtue of doing a, another story for National Geographic magazine about an, uh, an explorer named Fritjof Nansen, who uh, was a Norwegian guy who's trying to duplicate this expedition, uh, this Jeanette expedition, but duplicate it in a different kind of boat, designed differently, uh, that, to withstand the ice better. Uh, and I thought, well, duplicate the Jeanette expedition. What was the Jeanette expedition? Wait a minute, you know, kind of like. Uh, did a shift here because as an American, as a historian, as as a um, someone who fancies himself as a bit of an aficionado of exploration narratives, I, I come out of uh, a background of working for Outside Magazine for years and years. Um, I thought, you know, I'd never heard of this thing, the Jeanette expedition. It's completely obscure today. DeLong, uh, the commander, I mean, I think if you polled a hundred people, you might get one person who's heard of him. And so I think narrative historians like me are constantly looking for these kinds of stories, uh, stories that were consequential in their time, but uh, are kind of obscure and forgotten now. And this fit fit perfectly. Who was George Washington DeLong? George Washington DeLong was the commander of the USS Jeanette, and he was a young Navy officer, very ambitious, who had made some, um, uh, made a name for himself uh, uh, with an earlier exp exploration into Greenland. And uh, he, had able, he had been able to convince the uh, Playboy publisher of the uh, New York uh, Herald Tribune uh, to, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, the New York Herald, later becomes Herald Tribune, um, to fund this expedition. Uh, James Gordon Bennett, the publisher of, the, of this newspaper, had sent Stanley to Africa to, to find uh, Livingston. This had been an enormous success. The newspaper was looking for an encore to that. So they decided to fund this expedition, even though it was staffed by officers of the U.S. Navy. Uh, it became this, you know, really one of the first official American attempt uh, on the North Pole. And uh, you know, this is, we're talking about the early days of, of, of polar fever, way before Shackleton and, and certainly way before Perry and so forth. And uh, it was the last expedition that ever undertook to sail to the North Pole. And I have to sort of undersc underscore that. To sail, uh, the, the idea was that if you bust through a little bit of the ice, you're going to eventually meet this open polar sea that everyone seemed to believe in. Uh, this idea that there was a warm water basin up there. If you could just get to it, you could have smooth sailing to the North Pole. And uh, that's what this expedition was really seeking to find, was the open polar sea. It doesn't exist. Uh, might exist soon because of climate change, but it didn't exist in, in the 1880s. What was the fascination with the North Pole at that time? People, people were just obsessed with this idea that there were certain places left, just a few places, that had never been touched by man. And uh, 
you know, one of the people I quote in the book uh, talks about how uh, a man will become obsessed with the idea that there is a room in his, perhaps in his attic, that he can't get to. Uh, it drives you mad. And uh, you know, now we know that there's really not much up there. It's just a shifting, you know, slab of ice. And uh, there, are, back then, there were theories that there was there was a lost civilization up there. There were vortexes or, or, or various uh, holes that led down into subterranean cavities of the earth. Um, this idea of an open polar sea. Um, you know, there was a lot of mythology about what might be up there. It drove people crazy not to know. In that era, what was it like undertaking an expedition? Well, uh, you know, uh, this was shortly after the Civil War. America was emerging from that, um, trying to uh, leave its imprint on the world in some way and to compete with the European powers uh, that, that had done really all the exploration at that point. Uh, so, in order to undertake an expedition like this, you, you know, there's a certain amount of money and organization. Uh, the Navy had to become involved because, you know, other explorations that had been conducted uh, had shown what happens when you go into the Arctic. Uh, it has to be very well organized or you get mutiny, you get cannibalism, you get scurvy, uh, all the classics, basically. Uh, and this expedition uh, was very well organized and, and they avoided all three of those things. No scurvy, no cannibalism, no mutiny. Uh, and uh, I think that, um, uh, however, the Navy of this time, the U.S. Navy, was in its infancy and was really weak and uh, quite poor. So they had to find uh, a sponsor, someone to pay for it. Uh, so that's why this is kind of this unique hybrid of being a U.S. Navy expedition paid for by a newspaper publisher who's looking for a great story. Uh, and, you know, that's something now that I think we'd find to be unorthodox. but. It made perfect sense in the 1880s. Was the Jeanette built specifically for this mission? Uh, the Jeanette was actually uh, a, a British boat uh, that was known as the Pandora, but uh, Gordon Bennett bought it. He thought it was terribly bad luck to have a boat named the Pandora, you know, Pandora's box, and, you know, the world's evils, uh, to send a ship into the Arctic with that name. So he named it after his sister, Jeanette. Uh, it was declared a, an official Navy boat, the USS Jeanette. Uh, then it was massively reinforced for the ice in San Francisco uh, by various uh, engineers of the U.S. Navy. Uh, and because they knew they were going to reach ice, they just didn't, thought they'd, you know, churn through it over a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, until they finally reached this open polar sea that I mentioned. And, uh, of course, they didn't have any idea what would really happen, which was it wouldn't be a few months. It was two years uh, of absolute you know, crushing pressure on this on this vessel. And so even though it was um, massively reinforced for the ice, it eventually succumbed, was was crushed, sank to the bottom of the Arctic Ocean, leaving 33 men and their, and their dogs out on the ice cap uh, to fend for themselves. How well known was this story at the time? At the time it was hugely front well Front page? Known. Uh, front page news. Uh, the, the, all the explorers were you know, household names. It was uh, serialized in the papers. And it, it wasn't just the vessel itself. It was also when it became lost after two years, other vessels were sent north to find it. Uh, so, you know, wave after wave of, of more, more calamity because almost invariably, you send a ship into the Arctic uh, this, in, this, in this time period, something bad's gonna happen. All of this generates more copy, more stories. Uh, and then after the survivors came home, best-selling books, uh, the journals of the, of the Commander DeLong were, became the best-selling book, um, uh, subject of a Navy inquiry, congressional hearings. Uh, it was hugely well-known in its time. And I think uh, it just sort of slipped between the cracks after that because there were subsequent expeditions to the bo both to the North and South Pole, and uh, it kind of uh, fell by the wayside. In the Kingdom of Ice comes out in August. Have you started your next project? Uh, I, I have. I don't ever talk about my new st stuff, though. I, I'm kind of superstitious about it. I feel like it's not going to happen uh, if, if I do start talking. So uh, I'll be uh, hopefully with you in a two, two or three more years with my new book. In the Kingdom of Ice, here's the cover. Hampton Sides is the author. August 2014, publication date.